easily one of the most powerful short films you're going to ever have a chance to witness. And I want to encourage each and every one of you to witness it. Fannie Lou Hamer is being played by our next guest, DB. I want to allow you to do the honors of breaking down ro- this royalty we have in yes. our presence. Please, yes. please, oh yes. please. <laughs> we are welcoming her for the first time, but uh, I think we can all I, I speak for everybody here when we say that we were pretty much blown away by her performance in King Richard. Mm-hmm. And I was telling her outside in the hallway while she was waiting that um, the Critics' Choice Association, uh, every year around award season, they send out all these gifts and stuff to all the critics mm-hmm. and members. And they sent out a photograph of the cast of King Richard with Serena and Venus Williams, as almost like a family portrait. Uh-huh. So I had that sitting on uh, my windowsill uh, in my apartment, and I forgot it today because I was like, yo, she's coming. What? I want to bring it, get it signed, and my dumb ass left it at home. Okay. But, you know, that's neither here nor there, but it was just something to joke about while she was in the hallway. We have to give her praise because she's an Academy Award nominated, Golden Globe nominated, Emmy nominated, and she's just doing so many amazing things with her career right now, before, prior, and after. And when she's here to talk about, like you just said, Sway, Fannie Lou Hammer in the short film. Fanny, please welcome Angie New Ellis. Wow. Y'all better look at God. You better look at it. Come on, look. Come on. You, you better, better look, look at, at God. Turn your uh-huh. ears up this ain't normal this ain't normal this is not normal normal. and we got to recognize when it's not normal that's right listen i I just want to say i'm gonna have to do the rest of my day after this okay y'all making me feel like i can like levitate you can you are (laughs) and you do (laughs) right i watched um cuba gooding jr robert de niro uh charlize theron and you and men of honor yeah Mm-hmm. And that was yeah. one of my favorite movies. And that's, mm-hmm. we're talking, your resume is just so rich and robust. Mm-hmm. Um, that's early 2000s, you know, mm-hmm. Cuba Gooden Jr., man. I, I, before we get into Fanny, can we ask you about a few of these projects? Ask me whatever you want to okay. ask. I am happy okay. to be in this house. Okay, mm-hmm. cool. What was it like working with Robert De Niro? Was he personable? Did he stay in character? Or did you get? did you guys get to see each other on set? Well, Cause you know he like black women. I mean, messy. I've been messy. I've been here for five minutes, and already the you story. know the levitated her daughter right back down. Right back. Like, <laughs> that ain't look at God. <laughs> Not that part. That's tea. That's tea. Okay, my bad. Sometimes, but what was that whole experience? No, I I was. You know, I was in awe, I got to say. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And I'm not I'm not in awe much. Okay. But he was, and he's earned that in mm-hmm. his, with his performances. You know, I don't know about him as a man. Mm-hmm. I don't know about, about his life. <laughs> okay. But I know that his work is, is um, you know, has, has paved the way in terms of, like, how you do it, in terms of investment, in terms of, like, leaving yourself at the door and just fully investing in character. Mm-hmm. And that's why I dig him so much in ter- for his work. Uh, so I just kind of just stared at him and tried, you know, tried to pretend like yeah. I wasn't staring at yeah. him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's what that was. What like. about Cuba? Cuba Gooden Jr. What was that like? Well, Cu- Cuba, it was after it was I think it was right after the after he won, won the Oscar. Oscar? Yeah. Oh, okay. Show me the money. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and so it, it, it's interesting. I ended, I've ended up working with Cuba a couple of times, you know, and I just it was really my first big job, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. It was my first big job. George Tillman gave me that. George gave Tillman. me that chance. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so I, I was a little bit I was a little nervous. I got to say I was nervous about in Charlie's and. It was a lot for me, and I was just trying to stay focused. What What would be in those situations if, you know, hopefully, I think that would be everyone's dream to be find yourself on a set with people you've idolized and admired yeah, for so sure. many years, but you still got to perform. So what, exactly. what, 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 what was your, uh, what helped you perform? What did you, where did you reach to where the nerves didn't get in your way of your best performance? Well, you know, I'm going to be fully transparent. You know, I... I'm, I wasn't the actor, the person, the per, the woman I am now. I was, I was not that, that woman. Then. Then. Okay, you All know, right. uh-huh. so I mm-hmm. was easily swayed, not okay. in a not in a good way. Okay, if that makes okay. any sense. Wasn't me then. No, wasn't you. Okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, you know, so I think that I was, you know, vulnerable to my circumstances, vulnerable to my environment, but I still, as you said, I had a work to do. I had work to do, and I did, I did what I could at the moment, you know, uh, which I hope was enough. But, um, and I, I gotta say, I didn't love acting 
then in the same way that I have an appreciation for it now. Mm -hmm. So then mm -hmm. it was a, it was a job. I think it's on. I think it's best that I'm honest about stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You know, it was a job, and I had to perform a job, and I was around all these really famous people, and I had but I had a job to do. Um, but I was a kid. I was a kid. You were wow. a kid. Wow, man. Uh, a Angelou Ellis is with us right now. It's so uh, you have so many. Colossal projects. Yeah. I want to. I want to. Let's get into Fannie Lou Hamer first, though, sure. because that's that's why we are here. Yeah. Um, how were you approached about this project? Well, I approached myself. Okay. Uh, so I'm from Mississippi. Mrs. Hamer is from Mississippi. Mm -hmm. uh, I lived in New York for a while, but I moved back home about ten or eleven years ago, and I needed a I needed a north star. I needed a guide for how to live back there. Uh -huh. because I was a caregiver, I was trying to act, I was trying to fight the Confederates, mm -hmm. um, and I was trying to do all that and maintain my sanity in Southwest Mississippi, and wow. that's a lot to you do. Say yeah. fight the Confederates. Wow. Um, and so I needed an example of how to do that. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, I went to all kinds of good schools and everything, and some bad, but even in the good ones where I majored in African American studies, I did not learn one day did I learn about Fannie Lou Hamer. And Mrs. Hamer is arguably one of the most significant figures in our political history, okay. hands down, period. Uh, we just don't know her because the history is written by men. I'm sorry, I know mm -hmm. y'all are lovely men around here, but it's history, it's written by men, mm -hmm. and we retell those stories and they don't make space for how black women have shaped this history mm -hmm. as well. Mm. So, I didn't know about her. I found out her, about her through our community grapevine. And she became my North Star. She became my guide in terms of how to care for my people in my house, how to care for my community outside of my house, and how to fight these Confederates mm -hmm. that I had to fight every day of my life. I have I had to drive by Confederate flags to go to the gym, to go to the bank, Damn. to live my life. Y'all, if that if y'all walked down, what years are we talking about? Right. We're talking about five, <laughs> wait, listen, <laughs> Mississippi didn't take the Confederate flag down until two thousand and twenty. Mm. Oh. That's so right. Let's mm -hmm. let's be real about that. So yep. all of that I'm so I'm talking about 3 or 4 years ago. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And and to live my if if, if y'all walked outside and saw a Confederate flag outside your door, y'all be mad, y'all be talking no, it would be huge. Yeah. But nobody said nobody was it was a it was a way of life down there that I could not bear. Mm -hmm. So I started doing things to 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 fight that. One of the things that I did, the first thing that I did was I paid for this billboard on Highway 55 in Jackson, Mississippi, where the folks don't have good drinking water. Mm -hmm. I paid for a billboard, and I had written, We Shall Overcome, and I had it written in Confederate flags. And it made people so <laughs> mad. <laughs> Can I get something on this? Yes. Come on. Let me get a pound too. That's my sister. Let me get a pound too. How perfect to say it. That's my sister. Right there. That's some low rent wow. championship. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Woo. And yeah. it made people so mad. Black folks and white folks were cursing Black me folks. out. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, because I was I was desecrating. We shall overcome. overcome. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. You know, and and so I made everybody mad. And that's what mm -hmm. I wanted to do because mm -hmm. I felt that there was a sleeping bear there that needed to be that somebody needed to shake. Um. Anyway, I said all that to say. That was the kind of work that Mrs. Hamer was doing. Mm, she wow. was fighting Confederates. She was taking care of these children, none of which were her own children, because she was deprived of having her own child because a doctor castrated her against her will and without her knowledge. So she was taking care of children. She was taking care of a community. She was fighting Confederates. She was doing all of that. And I needed an example. And Mrs. Hamer be ended up being that example for me. And then I said, okay, I'm going to write something about her. Nobody else would do it, so I needed to do it myself. A couple years ago, I did this film called The Clark Sisters Movie, That's, directed by... Come on. Had to just brought that up. Directed by Christine Swanson, and we mm. just developed this creative, collaborative relationship. And I said, Christine, I got to do something. I just can't have it in me. I got to get it out of me. So she was like, let's do a short film. So she applied for a grant through this organization called Chromatic Black that funds disruptive voices, particularly by black, voice, by black folks films, uh, short films. They gave us $10,000. So this time last year, mm. uh, we used that $10,000 and we shot Fanny. 
You shot Fanny for 10K? 10K. Yeah. yeah. Oh, shit, man. Let's do some work together. <laughs> what are we doing? I know, right? Ingenue, why we ain't done? You were I born know. in the Bay. I know you're a Mississippi person. <laughs> 10K? Wow, okay. This is amazing wow. for yeah. 10K. Y'all yeah. about to win all kind of awards. We hope. We hope. You we should. Know. Because, in, listen, what, what, whatever award we win, I want folks to hear Mrs. Hamer's words. Okay. Because they are they are prophetic, and folks need to know and hear and hear her. She lived such a rough life, too. Um, when you watch it, you'll find out some of the consequences she had for standing up for voters' rights and mm. some of the things that happened to her uh, when she was behind bars and the way she was treated and beat and assaulted by, uh, instructed by police officers uh, to have others um, inflict this pain on her. It's just such a strong, beautiful, amazing story. Uh, Fannie Lou Hamer, make sure you guys watch it. And you keep, this ain't just something you talk about. This is something you do. And I was follow, I was following you on Twitter, and I saw you speaking about the JLT fund. Yes. Speak to us about what the JLT fund is all about. Well, like I said, Mrs. Hamer lost her ability to have children because some some doctor said that she she didn't deserve to have a say in her own uh, reproductive life. And that's no different from what has happened over the summer with Roe v. Wade being overturned. Mississippi is a full abortion ban state. Ain't nowhere in Mississippi that you can get. There's no kind of technical loophole, nothing. There's no uh, abortion clinics remaining in the state of Mississippi. So, um, I, I, listen, I Mrs. Hamer is, is wonderful because she fought for voting rights, but what also made her wonderful is she said... All this voting rights in the world ain't gonna help. Ain't gonna help nothing until this country sees me as a human being. Yes. Yeah. And that's what separated her her rhetoric from her contemporaries is because it wasn't just voting for her. Because the voting voting is transactional, and any any party can tell you to vote. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? The mm-hmm. Republicans can say go vote. You know what I mean? Voting ain't enough is what I'm saying. Yeah. And for Fannie, voting was not enough. She said, you got to see me fully for my full humanity. So her reproductive rights being stripped from her was a stripping of her humanity. This is what has Mississippi was really honestly the catalyst for all this ish. Mm-hmm. Mm. So I have to fight against that. And I got to do it. Who, no matter who's in, who, who is on the Supreme Court, we still got to do that. Still got to fight. Because it's not, you know, it's not. It should never be contingent. Our, our fates as black people, as black women, cannot be contingent on who's in office. Mm -hmm. So I know I got to do stuff outside of the system. So this fund that I've started, JLT Fund Forty Five, is something I've started with my sister Sasha Barnes, and it really is to help women who are pregnant, and who need assistance. Um, and they can uh, email us at that address mm-hmm. and, and we will help them. The misogynists won't win. They won't win. My name is Anjanou Ellis and I am a citizen of the state of Mississippi. If you are pregnant and in need of help, contact us at JLT Fund 45 at gmail.com that's jlt fund 45 at gmail.com the misogynists won't win uh, Janu Ellis is here with us today big round of applause I know you saw in King Richard uh, Fanny it's a new film BB you want to jump in there real quick yeah if you don't mind if you could talk about the moment when Fanny was talking but then President Johnson tried to schedule a press conference to interrupt her, and it backfired really horribly. <laughs> he didn't try. He did. Well, okay, yes, he did. He did. But he then tried, later on, he yeah, did. yeah, he did. It was interesting because he, uh, Dr. King spoke, uh, Aaron Henry spoke, uh, who was a, an, an executive of the NAACP, uh, uh, Chaplain King, who was a chaplain at Tougaloo College. They all testified in front of this credentials committee. They were trying to say that the Mississippi Freedom Democratic Party was a true representative for the state of Mississippi, not this all white male delegation that they had sent up, sent up to New Jersey. So um, but when Fanny got up to speak. She started speaking and all of a sudden the camera stopped, but she didn't know that. 
She went through her full speech, telling a whole story, all these things that had happened to her. She comes off the, comes out of the room, and they tell her it wasn't aired. It wasn't aired. Lyndon Johnson uh, threw this press, had this press conference where he was talking about the something anniversary of somebody passing away. Now he let all them people, people, all, all them other people speak, but when she opened her mouth. He said, "Uh -uh. (laughs) uh-uh, no, Mm. no, and he shut her up. However, look at God, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Later on that night, the networks aired her testimony anyway. And so the world got to hear her. They got to hear her, it's powerful. Fanny, people want to watch this film. How can they watch it? What do they watch it? Well, I think it's <laughs> not being a very good salesperson. Oh, damn. <laughs> damn, <laughs> damn on, Janice. We got you. Rewind. <laughs> Faith Filmworks on Instagram. Also, it's on YouTube. Fanny it's also on, on YouTube. On YouTube. Yes. Um, wow. Yeah, man. Anja mm-hmm. Ellis. And I know Heather got to go. I but just want to give you flowers. Yeah. Like, I, I will never forget the day Missy Elliott called into this show mm-hmm. to talk about the Clark Sisters. And, and and the film, I believe her, Queen Latifah, Mary J. Blige had yeah, they were all producers, producers on, on the film. Mm-hmm. And I just remember it immediately took me back to the summers of Detroit where my great grandmother, you know, we would spend time and hearing this music from the Clark sisters. I never even thought about their mom. Never even knew who she was. I was a little girl. Mm-hmm. When I watched this film, I was like, who is this woman? Hmm. I did not realize you were the same woman from all of the films. Like, I got lost Mm -hmm. in watching you. Mm -hmm. You brought this woman to life for me, and it made so much sense. Fast forward, King Richard. Fast forward now to Fanny. God, to me, has just, one of the gifts has given you to be able to take these powerful women and make them so relatable, to just put a face and a voice on them finally for women that we just knew so little about. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to say thank you to you. I appreciate you, and I will support you forever. Oh, shit. Wow. That was real. Y'all go ahead and hug. Uh, this is the end of the movie anyway. Thank so. you. Okay. <laughs> thank you so much. It's just like a final scene. Yeah, that's the final scene. No, I just yeah. wanted to say that to you. Yes. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much. These women are, they. these women, people have tried to er- literally erase, erase them. Mm-hmm. That's that's erase what I them. felt. Because I, I didn't know why I didn't know them. Yes. Even, the only thing I knew about Serena and Venus' mom is that she sat in the stand. Facts. Yo, but you brought her to life. <laughs> Listen. How, how did she feel about Thank your you. portrayal? Did she ever, y'all have a talk afterwards? A little bit, a yeah. little bit. She's she's a woman of few words. Yeah. She mm. says what she wants to say when it's necessary. Mm-hmm. And she was utterly supportive of, mm. of our film and of, and of me. And I didn't need her to say a whole lot to me. I just, I saw her smile mm. and I, and I, mm. and I felt that I had done right by her. Cause she's one of these women. This woman, this woman created the play of Serena Williams, yes. and was the our most significant tennis player. Period. Ever. Hello, yeah. and she she created her play, and nobody knows. It just you. That's exactly what I thought about her. Oh, so she's oh she's so nice. She comes to all her points on my <laughs> chips. Yeah. Yeah. Tennis she's mom. So nice. yes. yes, exactly. Nah. Nah. Yeah. Thank um, you. Thank Anjanu. you. Anjanu Ellis. Let's give her a round of applause. Thank you for joining Thank us you. this morning. I yes. hope you enjoyed your stay. Listen. Yes. We didn't mean to make you cry. <laughs> Heather did that. I don't no, know. No, I just, <laughs> no, that's just no. my flowers for her. Thank you. I do appreciate that. Absolutely. I do. I never thought I'd be sitting here with y'all. Ever. Really? No. No. Come on. I'll be Those... watching y'all. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Let's add this to the list. We're going to add this to the list. And Anjanu is a citizen. A sway in the morning, baby. Look at God. You know, uh, be great, stay great. Thank you for what you give us. Thank you. Stay stay on purpose. We're here. Okay, stay intentional with it. You have platforms. As long as we have platforms, you have platforms to talk about it. I appreciate y'all. All All right, Anjanu Ellis, y'all.